Hello, everybody, and thank you for stopping in today. Um, I hope today finds everybody safe and healthy and happy. Today, I'm going to watch a video that's been on my list for quite a while. The title is The Silent Rise of ASEAN is a Global Superpower. And I imagine they are rising as a global superpower for several reasons. Um, the growth of all of their economies and populations recently. The importance of the Malacca Strait and the Singapore Strait as far as for global shipping. And also, there's a fair abundance of natural resources in the region. There's probably some other reasons that I'm missing out on and not thinking of right now. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Anything else that was left out or should be mentioned? And the comments are always deeply appreciated. Or just leave me an emoji and let me know that you are here. Um, please like and subscribe if you'd like to and want to subscribe. If not, then don't. I completely understand. And here we go, the rise of ASEAN as a global superpower. The most powerful countries in the world continue to be involved in war, recession, and high inflation. There is a band of countries in Asia that's separating themselves from everyone else. ASEAN, or the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, is a regional organization located in... Right, I'm not going to look. Let me see if I can name all 10 of them. Um, we've got Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, Burma, Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia, Singapore, Vietnam. Got them. I'm actually proud of myself for that. East Asia, composed of 10 member states. Its mission is to promote peace, stability, and economic cooperation among its member countries. The organization has been experiencing a rise to prominence thanks to its net economic growth, regional integration, geopolitical significance, diplomatic platform, and regional cooperation on various challenges. This just shows that together, the 10 countries of ASEAN form an economic powerhouse. The region is said to be one of the world's fastest growing markets. However, that growth remains somewhat unknown to the rest of the global community. This is the silent rise of ASEAN. Today, we stray away from the loud stories of success and quietly observe the ascent to the top of a region down south. ASEAN's general approach is widely influenced by the countries inside it. It differs from other regional and international organizations because, Unlike others, the group widely values the importance of not overstepping boundaries and being highly considerate. The uniqueness of ASEAN member countries is that decisions are only made when everyone agrees on them by unanimous voting, as compared to the usual majority voting. Moreover, despite its alliance, along with the emphasis on cooperation, ASEAN has clear boundaries when it comes to interference. The organization also practices gradual integration especially when it comes to groundbreaking moves and decisions. But um, I guess hopefully he's going to get to it. How strong is it? And exactly is there, I guess I know there's military cooperation between like the Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, because I know actually with the Navy, United States Navy, they've done some um, maneuvers even just fairly recently. But is it just an economic organization, or is it an economic military organization, or is it a little bit of all of them? The organization was established in 1967 by five founding nations, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, and the Philippines. Eventually, neighboring states decided to join the cause. Brunei in 1984, Vietnam in 1995, Laos and Myanmar in 1997, and Cambodia in 1999. It currently comprises a 10-member alliance, and just in late 2022, Timor-Leste has been admitted as the organization's 11th member in principle, with its full membership still pending. Timor-Leste? I've never heard of them. I guess it's an island nation, probably a small island nation. I have never heard of them, I don't think. I've heard of Timor, but I know nothing, absolutely zero about them. With 10 member nations, soon to be 11, ASEAN has a diverse yet somewhat similar geographical and cultural identity. 
The 10 countries have similar cultures and values due to proximity and long-standing trade relations with each other. When it comes to geography, there is clear diversity between them, as some are archipelagos and peninsulas, while others are landlocked or are located on the mainland. Due to this, the countries are able to offer diverse products, at the same time having connections with each other thanks to similarities both in culture and accepted norms. Despite it being low-key, ASEAN has been recognized as the most successful multilateral organization in Asia. This success has been achieved due to regional cooperation. It is one of the values that the organization prides itself in. ASEAN's unique diplomatic engagement with its member states, known as the ASEAN Way, allows it to maintain regional peace and cooperation. Sure, sounds like a bad joke, but the ASEAN Way is the way. It is that same ASEAN Way that allows it to foster economic growth within its borders. This said economic growth is visible as it was reported that it is one of the world's fastest growing consumer markets and a global manufacturing hub. <laughs> it said In it fact, was one of the least well known. Who doesn't know about it at this point? I mean, if you're paying any attention, you should know about it. If the organization was a single country, it would already be the seventh largest economy in the world. This economic growth and stability clearly tie back to the working internal system. ASEAN was founded specifically to accelerate economic growth among members, but it also works on social progress and cultural development. One could argue that the rise ASEAN is seeing today stems from its prioritization of peace and security. It is precisely because of this togetherness the members work hand in hand in order to produce tangible outcomes that resulted in the region seeing significant economic growth since its founding. The ASEAN organization prioritizes collectivism rather than individualism, something the Western culture fosters. To further paint you what this economic growth looks like, let's talk about the booming consumer market within the region. In an article posted by HSBC Business, by 2030, 70% of ASEAN's population will become middle class. The region is also forecasted to become the world's fourth largest economy in the coming decade. These predictions are supported by the fact that in recent years, technology and e-commerce have become widespread in the region. This phenomenon opened up doors for businesses to invest in ASEAN countries, improving the economy. ASEAN's successful adaptation to the digital age has opened doors for hosting globally competitive businesses within their borders. It is clear that the region is highly competitive, but in a positive manner. It has been able to integrate itself into the global economy by sharing resources and working with each other to produce desirable outcomes. The contribution of each country is not equal. Okay, we got Indonesia's for GDP way up there. Gross domestic product. Thailand and Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam, Singapore. Singapore's so tiny, but per person, per capita, it's actually one of the top in the world. Um, Myanmar, Burma, yeah, Laos, poor Laos. And the same, but thanks to the organization's framework, the win of one is also the win of all. One of ASEAN's biggest assets is its booming digital technology sector. The rise of social media like Douyin, the booming entertainment industry, and general internet and mobile users have immensely contributed to the advancement of the tourist, entertainment, and information technology industry, just to name a few. The organization has continuously been working on creating sustainable infrastructure development in order to assist the economic building of each member state. This will grant access to the regional ecosystem to be able to reach its co-members, allowing for mutual economic development. These infrastructure development projects also open up opportunities for the states because it makes them more palatable to both foreign and local investors. ASEAN also has a master plan for connectivity, which does not only include roads and highways, railways, airports, industrial estates, power and digital hubs, but also the improvement of people-to-people -people linkages. This means attracting top talent to further their cause of being an advanced technological hub. 
It is not an exaggeration about how fast the growing digital market is growing within Southeast Asia and the countries within the ASEAN organization. In fact, multiple nations within the ASEAN region race to become the next Silicon Valley, specifically Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, and Vietnam have garnered global recognition due to their emergence as technological hubs. Not only do these countries have such big numbers of tech startups within their land, but a report from Nikkei Asia also shows how promising the talent pool for tech is within the region. What this shows us is that not only does ASEAN have a lot to offer when it comes to manufacturing and products, but it also shows that there is an abundance of talent within the ASEAN population when it comes to technology and engineering. If you were to ask me, I genuinely believe that ASEAN's strong suit in tech will be one of its tallest ladders towards success. In fact, the region is already being poised to become the new global tech and startup hub. While the damage caused by the pandemic was undeniable, it also paved the way for the rise of digitalization. Yeah, you also got, you know, China's economy's really, you know, they're, they're, they might be in trouble right now a little bit with that uh, a recession they're starting to go through and that whole real estate problems, that's going to send some severe ripple effects to their economy that... It's going to be kind of startling, I think, for some people. Japan's economy is back on the rise again, finally, after a while, but then they've got the aging popul population problem. Now, a region that has been silent most of its life is now climbing up to the top as opportunities dawn down its booming market. While the ASEAN organization has a bright future, there is no doubt they face economic challenges on the horizon. The majority of these nations rely on their tourism industry. And when the borders closed in 2019, a big percentage of national profit from many countries flew out the window. But, as we clearly saw, the organization was able to pull itself right back up despite this uncertainty. When the pandemic hit, countless businesses had to cease operations. At the same time, it opened new doors for other industries to persist – e-commerce and online business. In this race towards innovation, Southeast Asia definitely has an unfair advantage. With its multitude of technological startups, it has the capacity to compete globally with bigger nations. If ASEAN is able to keep this momentum going, the whole world will be looking down south when it comes to tech. Aside from the unprecedented pandemic, another challenge ASEAN has to face is the rapidly changing global environment. It is clear two trends are apparent, globalization and regionalization. In this day and age, it will be difficult for any nation to survive and prosper without trade. And when it comes to trading, an established connection with the global and regional markets is vital. This is exactly why the Cross-Border Connectivity Project of ASEAN perfectly addresses this issue. It opens up multiple pathways for ASEAN countries to trade not only with each other, but also globally. When it comes to regionalization, it seems like ASEAN already is one step ahead. Now, with the strong rise of technological hubs and digital startups within the region... Yeah, I just didn't realize that they had that many uh, digital startups in the region. I apologize for my kitty cat. She was kind of demanding at times. But I did not realize they were becoming that much of a hub for, uh, you know, just small startups and... Great promise when we look at it from the perspective of global markets. Like the tech in the region continues to grow exponentially, the foundation of ASEAN is actually its global trade relationships. Eight out of ten countries in ASEAN are already part of the World Trade Organization, while the other two, Vietnam and Laos, are negotiating membership. Regional trade, of course, is an important aspect of the individual economies of all nations, but ASEAN as a regional organization, aims to grow its economy as a whole. This is why it allocates resources to infrastructure building and connectivity projects to its member states. This support coming from the organizations allows industries in these countries to flourish, making their products and services competitive in the global market. ASEAN played a central role in Asia's economic integration. In 1992, the organization's members established the ASEAN Free Trade Area with the intention of creating a single market, increasing intra-ASEAN trade and investment, 
and attracting foreign investment. In simple terms, taxes and tariffs were removed to allow for freer trade within the region. So it is a full f free trade zone? I did not realize that. That's interesting. But it makes sense. It makes sense. Plus, you know, everybody's close together and it just free trade helps a lot of places. You know, it can hurt some area, local economies as well. It depends, you know, on what's being traded in general. This lessens expenses and improves profits. Now with this single market, ASEAN is now able to offer to the world a wide variety of top-of-the-line products manufactured hand-in-hand -hand by neighboring nations. Not only did it promote economic and cultural exchange, but it also pushed its members to produce globally competitive products, especially in the world of tech. ASEAN is a highly unassuming region composed of relatively small economies, but today we saw how truly there is strength in numbers. All right, so there we go. We got the rise of ASEAN as a global superpower. Let me know what you think in the comments about it. I'm a little curious about, you know, with the military coup in Myanmar, you know, how much has that played? What does what are the other members of the organization think about that? You know, it's kind of been a bloodshed going on there. You know, a lot of people have died and it's a lot of people aren't happy over there. So, um you know, just how has that impacted? Is there any condemnation? I know they said that for anything to happen, there has to be majority vote. And, you know, what's their military government, you know, voting and how are, are they are, are they even taking place in anything? Let me just say that. Um, let me know what you think. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you stay safe and don't forget to smile wherever you are. Thank you for watching and goodbye.